and think about where you are in your life right now. You know, Scott, if you'll throw up the screen, we very rarely look at our results. I never looked at my results at all until I was 26. Oh, I got report cards and I had, um, you know, people talk to me and give me advice and tell me what I should be doing. But I never seriously sat down and looked at the results I was getting in my life. Now, I want to recommend you do that. In fact, I want to recommend you do that right now. If you've got a sheet of paper in front of you, I'd like you to jot down what's the most you've ever earned in a year. And you may say, well, money's not everything, and you're right, it's not. But there really isn't anything that will replace it. And you see, the amount of money you earn is a direct indication of the programming that's taking place in your mind right now. Take a look at your social life, the people you mix with. What kind of income do they earn? What kind of results are they getting? You're going to find that the results you're getting are very much the same as the results they're getting. You see, this is an orderly universe, and we really attract to us energy that's in harmony with us. The people we mix with are very much like ourselves. Now, I felt very comfortable doing that until one day someone woke me up. And they made it very clear to me that if I wanted to change my life, I was going to have to mix with people that were living the way I really wanted to live. You know, that made sense. But I wasn't doing that. I really wasn't doing that. Now think about it for a moment. We are truly the product of our environment. I'm going to go through some ideas here this morning, or this evening, wherever you happen to be, and hopefully it will help you understand how you really got to where you are. This entire universe operates in a very orderly way. It operates by law. There are no accidents. As you start to study and gain an understanding of the laws of the universe, your life will start to change. John Kennedy one time asked Dr. Warner von Braun, who was the father of the space program, what it would take to build a rocket that would carry a person to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. And the good doctor said the will to do it. Then he proceeded to point out that the natural laws of this universe were so precise that we didn't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we could time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. Now, just as I was saying that, my mind flipped back to a point when I received this book. That's when I first started to study this. I was earning $4,000 a year. I owed $6,000. And almost all the people I was mixing with were in about the same boat. If somebody had been talking to me about the laws of the universe at that time, I think I probably would have shut them down right away. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, I don't care where you're living right now, where you're at right now. I want you to try and understand this. You can do so much better than you're doing. And we can show you how to do that. You see, I have spent my entire adult life, from the time I was 26, 
until today studying one subject. When I first started to study this, I became absolutely fascinated with it. You know, in 1973, I took my pen and I sat down and I wrote out that I would build a company that operated all over the world. We were doing a meeting very similar to this here about, I don't know, a month, six weeks ago. And Mikey, our COO that opened this meeting, she phoned me. I just walked in to sit down and watch television. That's something I very rarely do. And just as soon as I sat down, I thought, I don't really want to watch television. So I got up to leave, and my phone rang, and it was Mikey. And she said, Bob, we just went into every country in the world. 93,000 people were tuned in to the meeting, very similar to this. Now, how did that happen? Do you know in 1973, when I wrote that down on a piece of paper, I had absolutely no idea how I could do it. Absolutely no idea. Now, I had been studying this since 1961. So I had about 12 years under my belt. And I had been studying with some absolute giants in this business. Everyone that I've studied with, have got me to do exactly the same thing. Sit down, Bob. Take a look where you are. Take a look at the people you're mixing with. It's not that they're bad people. It's just that they don't know how to help you get to where you're going. So if you keep hanging around with them, you're all going to end up at the end of the road in the same place you're in right now. Do you know that 95 out of 100 people are losing. They're struggling. They struggle all the way through their life. Go to the actuarial department of any of the giant insurance companies, and they will tell you that about 5% of the people end up financially independent. All the rest are struggling. Now, that's rather sad, and you don't have to live that way. Now, I want you to think of results again. And I'd like you to think of the results that you'd like to get. What would you really like to be earning? I don't care what the number is. I could show you how to do it. You may say, well, Bob, that's sort of a braggadocial statement. No, it's not. That statement is based on an understanding that I've developed over 60 years. On the 5th of July, I will be 87 years old. I'm only a nine iron away from being 90 years old. And I have never stopped studying this since I was 61. You see, I became so absolutely fascinated with this information, I couldn't stop studying it. And as I studied it, my income just kept going up and up and up. This just kept growing. I've earned millions of dollars. Now I have two months high school, two months. When I started to study this, I had absolutely no business experience at all. I'll tell you what happened. If you'd throw the introductory screen up full size, Scott. Pull it right up. I started it in 1961, and until 15 years ago, I had, I had earned millions of dollars, but I couldn't seem to keep it. I kept getting in trouble. The company kept getting in trouble. Fifteen years ago, the lady you see on the screen, Sandy Gallagher, came to a seminar. She was a securities attorney, and uh, she was buying and selling banks, turning banks public. But she became fascinated with what I was teaching. And she kept coming to the seminars, and then she kept hanging around. And one day she said, Bob, I'd like to join you in this company. I could help you a lot. You see, my expertise is money. She is absolutely incredible with money. And 15 years ago, Sandy Gallagher became a partner of mine. She owns half of this company. 
And 15 years ago, this company took a turn in the right direction. Now, if you go back to the screen, Scott, thanks. What happened? As a corporate point of view, no, the slide, please. As a corporate point of view, I got started to get information from somebody that really understood what they were doing. You see, I was mixing with people that earned a lot of money, but most of them were in the same position as me. They weren't keeping it. We were getting tremendous results. But then the results would go down. And then we'd go back up, and then they'd go down. And then they'd go back up, and then they'd go down. And then they'd go back up, and then they'd go down. We were playing like we were on a racetrack, going around in circles. You've probably played that game yourself. It's not a fun place to give you. It's not a fun game to play. Now, we will show you and talk to you about what you should do with money. We'll show you how to earn it. We're very good at that. And I think as we get into this, you're really going to enjoy it. But you're not going to get it by accident. You're going to make a commitment that you're really going to study it. Now let me explain. Throw it up full screen shot, please. Just look at this for a moment. In 1961, I met a man that gave me that book, Think and Grow Rich. And he said, Bob, begin to think in abundance. A disciplined mind can create substantial income starting today. And that's exactly what I did. And I started to study. I started to study like a serious scientist. In 1966, I went to visit... Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant of the Nightingale Conant Corporation. You can put that down for a minute, Scott. You see, Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant started this industry that we're a part of, this personal growth industry. They started it with a record that Earl Nightingale made called The Strangest Secret. And what Earl was talking about is pretty, pretty well what I'm talking about right now. And... They started to mail the record. Earl Nightingale was a radio broadcaster. He was the most listened to radio broadcaster in the world. Lloyd Cornett ran a mail house. He started to sell it for him. They were two absolutely brilliant men that came together. Okay, put it back. Thanks, guys. Now, I went to work with them in 1966. In 1968, I was their vice president of sales. And I was uh, I was living in Chicago, and I was waiting for a green card. That's not a good place to be if you're Canadian, because you can't come back to Canada if you're Canadian. If you're living in Canada, you can't go back to the States. I don't know, it's a funny rule, but it's... It's the rule. So I was staying, I was living at the Lincolnwood Hired House, and I'd been there for a number of months. Lloyd Conant used to invite me over to his home for dinner. I was at his home for dinner one night, and I said, Lloyd, how did you start this company? Because he didn't start a company, he started an industry. Lloyd, I was, he'd start telling the story. He'd lift his arm, and he'd, he'd point up to an area, and wherever he went, I went there with him. And he said, well, he said, I was, you know, and he started telling me a story. And he said, I was given this book, and I studied it all weekend. And I made up my mind, I'd start a world-class company. He went and got me the book. I wasn't remotely interested in why he started that company. I was only interested in what was in the book. Now, what was in that book was very difficult to read. It took me a number of years to really, really decode it. Keep in mind it was written in 1915. 
I have spent from 1915 till today breaking this down in the vernacular. It's in language that you're going to understand. We use diagrams that you'll understand. And we'll take and show you over the next five days all the basis of what you can do. So I want you to really think. You see, when I was given this book, the man that gave it to me, he said, if you will spend the rest of your life studying this, he said, you can give anything you want. Now, I really didn't believe that. But you know something? I believed he believed it. And I made up my mind that I would do that. And I have do it. I've studied this book every day for the last 60 years. This is the book that inspired Rod Byrne to make the secret movie, which I was part of. Now think of this. Everyone wants freedom. Everyone wants freedom. Time and money freedom. You'll be amazed at how much free time you have when you never have to think about money. Your whole life will change. I think you know that it's all in the mind. And you form paradigms. You may not even know what a paradigm is. I certainly didn't. But you'll find, as we go through here, that paradigms literally control your life. Literally control your life. And because paradigms are very rarely changed, paradigms control lives forever, their whole life. Our company is in the business of showing people how to change paradigms. Now look here for a moment. In 1934, Dr. Thurman Fleet was very involved in the healing arts and holistic health. He stated, the mind is an activity, not a thing. No one has ever seen the mind. In order to gain clarity and eliminate confusion, I'm gonna create an image that we can work with. Now, that was Dr. Fleet's words. And here is his image. He said, let that represent an individual. If you'll let that, let that represent you. I have certainly let it represent me. The big circle is the mind, and the small circle is the body. The top of that big circle is the conscious mind, and the bottom is the subconscious mind. It's rather interesting how this works. The little circle is the body. This is the most valuable idea that I have ever learned in the 60 years that I've been studying this. Now think about that. That's a pretty bold statement. If you're not into studying every day, this could sound like, oh, not something you'll really be interested in. Are you interested in earning all the money you want, living the way you want, buying the boat, taking the trip, living in the house of your choice? Are you interested in those things? This drawing can help you do that because you're going to understand how your mind functions and all it comes from your mind. Now look it. Let me just run through the basics of this. There's the conscious, the subconscious, and the body. The conscious mind is the thinking mind. That is also the educated mind. That is where the intellect is resident. The subconscious is the emotional mind. 
Now, these two parts of your personality operate totally different. The conscious mind, you have the ability to choose because you can think. Because you can choose, you have the ability to accept or reject the information that you're listening to. My goodness, there's enough negative information coming to us through media, through television, newspapers, whatever way you can think of, globally. Not just in your city, not just in your country, but globally. Now think. You have the ability to reject that, but most people don't. As a matter of fact, they jot notes down on it and chat about it when they can get together. When you reject it, you have the ability to originate. Now think of this for a moment. Your subconscious mind must accept everything you give to it. It has absolutely no ability to reject. And I want you to understand this. This is huge. The subconscious mind cannot determine that which is real and that which is imagined. The subconscious mind is very, very powerful. It is very powerful. Now let's watch here for a moment. Just based on what I've told you, we'll have a little test here. Here's you today. And you're getting inundated with all kinds of information from your outside world. It's flowing into your consciousness, okay? From your outside world. Now you have the ability, just as we've done here, to throw that information and say, get out of here. We can say, get out of here, because we have the ability to accept or reject. The problem is most people don't do that. They, and they, when they don't, they leave their mind wide open and it goes right into their subconscious mind. And that is because they have a paradigm. And the paradigm controls this person. Now, you might wonder, how did that paradigm get formed? How does it work? Why does it control us? Well, I want you to, if you're taking notes, really pay close attention. That's now. This is you when you were an infant. But understand this. Before you even arrived on this planet, a little particle of energy from mom and a little particle of energy from dad came swimming along and... They resonated, they became one. And that became the nucleus of you. And that kept set up an attractive force until 280 days later you made your debut on the planet. Now look. This is how you arrived. The subconscious mind wide open. And whatever's going on around you was going right into your subconscious mind. That's all the television shows, that's the people that are talking, that's everything that's going on around, how people are living. It's going right into your subconscious mind. It's becoming fixed in there, and that's how the paradigm is formed. Okay? Now that paradigm is controlling your life. I want you to think of the people that were writing the code for that paradigm. That program, that bio program. You know, I've got a computer in front of me. It's got all kinds of programs in it. In fact, I've got programs that are controlling these slides that I'm turning up for you. The people that wrote these programs, wrote the code for them, are brilliant people. They really know what they're doing. But you know the people that wrote the code for the paradigm knew nothing about what they were doing. They left the, they left the baby's subconscious mind wide open to all the information that's going on around, all the negative information. See, that's how the baby learned the language they learned. The baby learned the language they learned by being subjected to the people that were speaking the language. I had an associate in Kuala Lumpur, a little boy four years old, could speak four languages, they thought nothing of it. He was subjected to people who speak four different languages. And that's the way it works.
Now, if at four years old a child can learn four languages, a four-year-old child, don't you think we could learn to change our life? Now look here for a moment. Here we are here today. And there we are there as an infant. The paradigm's literally controlling us. When paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. When paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. Now look here for a moment. The yellow is the organized educational model. That's the school you're sending your children to. The white is the Proctor Gallagher model. We'll say there's a child and those little antennae that just come up are the senses that are plugged into the conscious mind. The child goes to school, they hear what the teacher's saying. And because they hear what the teacher's saying, everyone thinks that this child is gathering the information they need to help them succeed in life. So what they're doing is gathering information. The books are piling up in the conscious mind. And then at a particular time through the year, they'll come and they'll have an exam to test the child to see if they're learning anything. And if they pass, they'll say, well, they really know something. I'm going to tell you something that is not knowing. Now, look at this for a moment. Listening and hearing are two different things. You hear with your ears. You listen with your emotions. Learning and gathering information are two completely different things. Gathering information is exactly what it implies. Learning is when we consciously entertain an idea, we get emotionally involved in an idea, we step out and we act on an idea, and we change the end results. Then we have learned something. You see, the learning is the feedback that comes from the change in results. There's quite a difference in the two models. What is a paradigm? Write it down, because probably most people you know don't know what it is. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And almost all of our behavior is habitual. Now think of that. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior and almost all of our habitual behavior is controlled by the program, the paradigm. Now look here for a moment. School gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us how to alter the old paradigm. Therefore, we frequently don't do what we already know how to do. Look at this, superior knowledge Inferior results cause confusion and frustration. Let's go back to the same model we were using. There's a person with all kinds of knowledge in their consciousness. They have gone all through school. They passed their exams. They got the degrees. They've got all kinds of knowledge, but they are not getting the results. Why not? They're not getting the results because the paradigm is controlling the results. The people are not doing what they know how to do. The paradigm is controlling the results. It's rather sad. If you want to change your results, it's absolutely essential that you change your paradigm. And that's what this company teaches. We literally teach people how to alter their paradigm. How to become millionaires if that's what they want. I've earned many millions of dollars and I found out earning money is one of the simplest things in the world to do. I've seen people that were sick get healthy because they understand this. See, the paradigm controls your health. It controls the vibratory rate of the body. Think about it. Now let's look at this again. 
There's the mind. There's the body. Here we'll learn something else about this model of ours. There's the conscious mind. And there's the subconscious. The conscious mind has hooked up, as we saw in the one little model a minute ago, sensory factors. They're like antennae that are plugged into the conscious mind. And we can see, hear, smell, taste, touch. But the conscious mind is also the intellectual mind. And we have higher faculties. We've been given faculties that enable us to change what's going on in that emotional mind paradigm. We have perception. The will, imagination, memory, intuition, and reason. Now think of this for a moment. All the other little creatures in the world are completely at home in their environment. They blend in. You and I are totally disoriented in our environment. We're totally disoriented. And that is because, <laughs> you know, we've been given these faculties. We've been given the ability to create our own environment. The other little creatures haven't got that. They haven't got the ability to create their own environment, but they've been built in that they blend in with their environment because they operate by instinct, which is perfect. We don't operate by instinct. We have been given these higher faculties. Perception, the will, imagination, memory, intuition, and reason. Where were you taught anything about these? The truth is, we weren't taught anything about them. And yet, it's these higher faculties that enable us to change what's going on in the subjective mind. This is almost unbelievable when you stop and think about it. When I started to understand this, I thought, wow, what could we do? Where could we go? Thanks, Scott. Now look it. We'll teach you how those function. Because they're all resident in your conscious mind. And you've got the ability, through the proper use of those higher faculties, to tell the paradigm to get the hell out of town. Then take over and control what's going in here, and you can write your own program. Now, what are you doing? You're writing a program that controls almost all of your habitual behavior. Success is a habit. A paradigm is nothing but a multitude of ideas that we habitually express. Success can be a habit. You're going to write your own program. This is phenomenal. I hear people say, does this cost something? What do you think it would be worth? If I could show you something to earn millions of dollars, change your corporation, change your life. Look at Decisions must be committed decisions. Then you have to be disciplined. Now these are two, I don't know, faculties? They're not faculties. But they're, they're two things that will change our life. You can make a decision. You can make a decision right now, I'm going to change my life. Then you want to discipline yourself. Discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and then follow it. So look, at, that's what I did when I was 26 when I picked up this book. I didn't even understand the book. Ray Stanford gave me this book. I didn't understand any of this. But he said, Bob, read it every day. You'll understand it. And you'll be able to pick up anything you want. I've read that every day. Look at This book is literally, is literally falling apart. See the 
pages are are actually coming out of the book. You know, 1961, that was quite a while ago. It's probably before Mikey's mother was born. <laughs> In fact, I said to her one time, I said, Mikey, I was studying this before you were born. She said, Bob, you were studying this before my mother was born. <laughs> now take a look here. There's where it all started for me, studying that record. I was listening to a man talk to me. And I just let him keep talking to me. And I kept getting really wound up because he got me to look at what I was doing. And everything was changing. Now here's what you want to understand. That you can create your own economy. And we are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. That's it. It's all about the mind. Please put the pad up again for a minute, Scott. I don't know if you had a pen the pad handy when I started, but if you haven't, we suggested that you write down what your income, the most you've ever earned in a year. And then what your social life is like, the people you mix with. Then ask yourself what their income is like. Because you see, you become a product of your environment. It's a strange thing, that's the way it works. Keep studying that. Now think of the mind. The mind, it, it's beyond comprehension. You're talking about the vibration of the universe. But we're talking about your marvelous mind. Understanding your mind and working in harmony with the laws governing the mind is essential. Now I'm going to show you the error that most people make. Most people start out thinking of the results they want to change. They're looking at their results. Those results cause them to start thinking. The thinking causes feelings. Those feelings cause actions. And you know what the action do? They produce more of the same results. And that's the sad truth. People get the same results over and over and over again. I've worked for many of the large insurance companies. All of Prudential, all Metropolitan Wines, Great Eastern. You know. And I'd sit down with a, a vice president of sales. And he'd say, well, what's this all about, Bob? And I said, well, you have in your computer, in your memory, the results of what all the people in your company are getting. Is that correct? And he said, yes. I said, I want you to think of the first name of two people that you manage in your particular territory. So he'd name a couple. And I said, you know something? You know you can tell me what their results are going to be six months from now. You know you can tell me that. And you know you can tell me pretty well what the end of the year is going to look like. See, this is the track most people go on. When you permit your present results to control your thoughts, your income cannot improve. And you know, they'd sit there and pretty soon they'd start squirming their seat a little bit. They'd say, damn, that's true. And then I'd show them they're letting the results control their thinking. Now look at this for a moment. This is rather interesting. Uh, an aware person is thinking into results, regardless of their present results. They're thinking into results. That person's starting point is they see what they want. They hold the image of the, what they want, the results they want to get. That controls their feelings. Their feelings control their actions, and their actions produce the results. And then, 
and they see their results and they go ahead and they set an image for renewed in results. Now, throw the slide, the pad back. I don't know what your results are. I have no idea what you're earning. But I do know this, you're earning considerably more than you're capable of earning. Any company I've ever gone into, I've told them I could show anybody how to multiply their income, and of course I could. But you must take a look at the people that you're mixing with, the social aspect of your life. And in most cases, they're probably earning very much the same as you are. So give it some thought, okay? I'm gonna turn this back to our chief operating officer.